Hey YouTube, this is Jeremy Who Weeps. Hello everyone. I am going to be going over a few verses. Um, Yohanan chapter 17, or John chapter 17, verse 5. And uh, let me see real quick. Um, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. Okay, starting off in Yohanan chapter 17, verse 5. If I read it out of the Net Bible, an online version, well, I'll read it out of the King James first, since uh, I know a lot of people use King James. Um, I myself don't um, have King James as my king, but this is this is his version. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That's the KJV. Now, out of the NIV, it says. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. The NIT, the Nut Bible online, says, And now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory I had with you before the world was created. Now, I thought that was interesting. I had been watching a video on someone saying that um, they had a good explanation for why Yoshua didn't know something when when he says um, of that day and hour um, no man knows not even the son only the father in heaven and they were trying to explain how the trinity worked with that um, so it caught my interest that particular verse so i started looking it up and this is what i found it to say and now father honor or give weight to me from yourself with the important importance which I keep on having with you before or in front of the world or humanity to be. So it could be saying, And now, Father, honor me from yourself with the importance which I keep on having with you in front of the world to be or before the world to be. So that before it could mean before is in time or it could mean in front of, ahead of, um, it's the concept of uh, preeminence or, or being um, the first or foremost of something. No, well, not necessarily the first. Just like if you're um, before someone in line, um, you are probably going to get served. If you're if you're at the grocery store and before someone in line, you're going to get served before them. So you'll be before them chronologically, but you're before them as in you're ahead of them. You're in front of them. So that's the whole idea with that Greek word. It's pro, I believe. Um, but when I was looking up um, the word that they have for which they say, I had with you, I found that that word had is in the imperfect tense, meaning um, it represents continual or repeated action where the present tense might indicate they are asking, the imperfect would indicate they kept on asking. So it's not just having, it's to keep on having. Um, the active voice, which says, um, well, it re represents the doer or performer of the action first. So um, that, um, that the I keep on having, it's referring to the I, it's not referring to the object. Um, and the indicative mood, which is a simple statement of fact, um, and then the, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's just saying that it's, it's a, a repeated action. So I translated it as keep on having. Um, because it's a continual repeated action. Um, so it's not past tense, how they interpret it as past tense. It's a continual action, imperfect. Yep, that would be it. Um, and then when it says um, humanity or the world, that, that is uh, the Greek word cosmos and can mean the world, but it can also mean humanity. It can mean <clears throat> um, the present way of doing things, the present order, structure of things, but it can also mean humanity as a whole. So, and then when it says to be, that word 
is um, they translate it as the word was. And when I looked at that word, I saw that it was in the present tense. So they translate it as past tense, but it's actually in the present tense. And um, it's in the infinitive mood. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. Um, it's basically the verb with to prefixed to as to believe, so or to be. Not just be, but to be. Um, so that's why I um, interpreted it that way as to be, because it's was is the past tense, but it's infinitive present, so it should be to be. So the world to be. Um, and now, Father, honor me, honor or give weight to me from yourself with the importance which I keep on having with you in front of the world to be or before the world to be. So that's Yohanan or John, chapter 17, verse 5. But I thought it was very interesting that they translated as was when it clearly says that it's present tense. Um, which just makes me think there's another another instance of someone mistranslating and having an obvious bias instead of just accurately translating they've got an obvious bias where they want to represent something primarily they want to pre represent Jesus as God um, so and then Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 it's going to take me a second to get there so if you don't mind waiting for a moment, um, I feel like I should do a series on just mistranslated words, usually because of doctrinal bias. Um, well, this is uh, Philippians 2, verse 6. I'm going to a couple different places, so bear with me if you wouldn't mind. Si vous play, grazie, appreciate it. Um, here we go. And this is talking about Yeshua. Who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a slave, by looking like other men, and by sharing in human nature. This is my understanding of what the verse actually says. Who, beginning to exist and submitted quietly under him, being in the image of Elohim, or image of Yahweh, didn't lead and command to seize plunder for himself to be equal to an Elohim or to Elohim, um, but emptied himself, taking the status of a voluntary slave becoming like other people, being found by design as a man. Um, let me just see. I have so many notes on this. I'm trying to see if there's anything really noteworthy that I want to say. That at form, it's usually translated form. Um, it means shape or the form by which a person or a thing strikes the vision, the external appearance, so basically the image. So it's talking about him being the image of the invisible creator, which it talks other places about him being the image of Yue. Um, so he didn't, he submitted quietly under Yue, and he didn't think to be an equal to Yue, or and equal to an Elohim, uh, an ultimate powerful authority, or, or a very powerful authority. He didn't think for himself to be equal to that. But emptied himself. Um, so he emptied his own will and his own drive and desire and ambition to take on the status of a voluntary slave, so basically to do whatever Yiwei told him to do and say whatever Yiwei told him to say. And um, he, be, he was like other people, being found by design as a man. So Yue 
by design, you had created him as a man. Just like he's created us as people. As a, as a man or woman. Um, here, I'll just read this. Um, morphe is the term for the shape or form or image. Morphe does not carry the thought of change in the metaphysical sense, i.e., the substance or essence of something. So it's not changing the actual substance. Um, by Koine times, Morphe had come to have the meaning of station in life, a position one holds, one's rank. And that is an approximation of Morphe in this context. So it's basically um, the image that he, the image of Yue, his, that was his rank. That was his, his station in life, the position that he had. So, um, Yohanan or John, chapter 17, verse 5, and Philippians or Frippians, chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. Noteworthy and interesting verses. Um, talking about the primary human being, Yoshua. The primary, Yiwei's chosen, chosen person, Yoshua. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have gotten something out of this. And uh, very much shalom to you. I hope you have a very good day. I welcome feedback, comments, discussion, um, all in the comments. And um, much shalom to you. Slan, adios, um, heida, bonjour. <laughs> Actually, that would be avoir. Um, grazie, merci. Um, konnichiwa sayonara. Bye. Shalom.